Eric Schneiderman, New York's Attorney General, has sent the Donald Trump Foundation a cease and desist letter, which essentially indicates that while they can continue do donating money, they will not be able to solicit any donations. Now part of the reason why that happens is because they're not following certain laws that are necessary to operate as a nonprofit in New York. <laughs> now New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman served the Trump Foundation with a cease and desist order after the Washington Post reported that the foundation had not received the proper certification to operate as a charity. Now here's what the letter said specifically. The notice states that the Trump Foundation is in violation of Section 172 of Article 7A, New York's executive law, which requires charitable organizations that solicit contributions in New York State to register with the Charities Bureau and to provide annual financial reports and annual audited financial statements. Despite failing to register pursuant to Article 7A, the Trump Foundation solicited contributions in New York State earlier this year in violation of state law. Now, that is obviously, you know, one example of what the Trump Foundation did wrong. You have to have the proper certification because you don't want charities running around or, or organizations posing as charities running around soliciting money or and, and then not really operating the way that they're supposed to. This is kind of a way of, uh, of doing oversight of such organizations. But remember, Trump's foundation has a lot of issues. For instance, Trump had his university, Trump University, operating out of New York. And there needed to be an investigation because they scammed so many students. And what the Trump Foundation did, Trump specifically, is they donated $25,000 to uh, the Florida Attorney General, Pam Bondi, because they didn't want an investigation in Florida. Right, So there's an investigation into that to see whether or not uh, he broke any laws. But it seems like it was a bribe, and it seems like that's some wrongdoing. He also spent $12,000 of uh, the money from the foundation for Tim Tebow memorabilia <laughs> in 2007. <laughs> so that's another thing to keep in mind. So I like that Eric Schneiderman is doing this. Eric Schneiderman has also been... I love saying his name, by the way. Me too. Great name. <laughs> Such a good name. He's also been um, very, very aggressive in going after Trump uh, in regard to Trump University. So this is all good stuff. And of course, Trump and his camp are saying, "Ah, oh, this is this is a partisan hit job and this and that." Just relax. You broke the law. You got to follow the law, and you didn't. Okay, you're not winning by breaking the law. You're losing. You're a loser. I like that it's a guy named Schneiderman taking down Donald Trump because you know he's anti-Semitic, right? So it's oh, fucking right. perfect <laughs> that a guy named Schneiderman, Schneider's like right and rubbing his face, and yeah. that's right, Schneiderman, Schneider. They're gonna call it a Jewish conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet they will. Yeah. Right? Of yeah. It's coming. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to need to get the sheriff star out after. Yeah, that. and then they're going to be like, Hillary's Jewish, part Jewish. They're going to find out she's 1 one, one 99th <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, good for you, Eric uh, Schneiderman. Yeah, look, I think that uh, both candidates need to uh, stop the shenanigans with their foundations. Okay? Not just Donald Trump. Obviously, Hillary has issues with her foundation as well. Um, especially when you consider uh, some of the corporate interests playing a role in donating money to her to get special access while she was Secretary of State. But it seems like that found her found. I mean, I, I understand there's there, there's there murky waters. There. But there they are actually, but that foundation, there. from what I've read and heard, Has, is actually doing good yes, things. Yes. So, He's buying Tim Tebow memorabilia. Okay, that you make a really great point there. Now, with Donald Trump's foundation, he hasn't donated money to it for a very long time. With Hillary Clinton. Um, there are examples of the foundation doing uh, charitable work that's important, um, but there's also some murky water there uh, that I, I'm glad that you mentioned. And so, look, you're running for president. Both foundations need to end. Y your involvement in the foundations, at least, needs to end. And so... I knew it would take a Schneiderman to end the shenanigans. That's all <laughs> yes. You know, the thing with him, too, with, uh, with his foundation, the reporter, you, I, I was listening to the reporter being interviewed, his story is amazing. The Washington Post reporter mm -hmm. about how he was trying to get information on the foundation, but the Trump administration foundation weren't giving him any information. So he went on Twitter and he started yes. tweeting, hey, can anybody help me out? And the people started helping him out. Some lady sent him uh, a name of the, what is it, one of the hotels where Trump had his painting up. Yes. And then, and then, and then the reporter goes, can anybody get me a picture of this? Yes. And then, and then, and then a, 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 a reporter for a, a Mexican network went ahead and booked uh, a stay at the hotel, then around like in, in the middle of the night, went walking around the hotel and found the picture that Trump had spent $10,000 on, bid it at a charity, 
is hanging out in some some yes. some some bar and lounge. Let's talk about that for a second. It's amazing. Let's talk about that for a second because that 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 component of the story is so incredible to me. So Melania Trump used money from the Trump Foundation to buy a twenty thousand dollar six foot tall portrait of Donald Trump. And so now it's hanging in one of the golf courses that he owns. And of course that's charity. Who's going to buy that for real? Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. <laughs> but think about what type of person it takes to want to hang a photo of themselves or a portrait of themselves that's that large, right? Like there have, there have been incredible TYT fans who are artists who have done like fan art and sent it to me. And I don't know what to do with it because I, I keep it, of course, in a safe place. <laughs> but I don't want to hang it on my wall because I don't want to be like, here's artwork of my face. Yeah, Everybody, like, You know, I feel like yeah. a clown doing that, yeah. right? But I, I appreciate it and I love it and I keep it safe. I just feel like it takes a certain type of egomaniac to want to hang artwork of themselves and on this the is, property. And this is how dumb, 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 dumb is. Yeah. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> uh -huh. This is how dumb he is. Because the guy was explaining, the reporter was explaining. What do you, what do you say? Can you break that down, dumb dumb? What is that? This is how really? dumb 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 is. All right. <laughs> no, really, because the reporter was saying, the Washington Post reporter was saying, all he had to do was, if he had, if if he'd taken that painting and put it somewhere that was a charitable organization, they don't have an office for the foundation. If he put it in the office for the foundation, then that doesn't that doesn't violate the law. Right. But because he put it in his for profit. Uh, Golf course, oh, really? then that's a violation because that's a for profit organization. So all he had to do was take that and put it somewhere where he's involved with some charity, like force them to be like, look, I get, you know, put this up on your wall. But he didn't do that. He put it in his for profit. So this smart genius that everyone calls a genius is kind of an idiot. Yeah, not I, kind of an idiot. He is like really, the epitome of idiot. If, if Elliot Spitzer was still the AG in New York, he would be in jail somehow. Trump, he would get him. Because you know he it, well, that's illegal, right? That he did that. Yeah. So and then the Trump University thing was a complete sh sham scam. Mm -hmm. And so why? When is he going to be in prison? Wouldn't that never, be great? Never, I want to see never. Donald Trump in prison. Wouldn't that be great? Just to see him cuffed doing the perp walk. Yeah. You know, wouldn't that be great? I was I was thinking about that. I was like, what if? Because in, in all honesty, like I I you know all of us we I think we all go well. He's not going to win. But but having seen what happened with Brexit. Haven't seen what happened with this Columbia thing recently, where they the the government and the, and FARC were gonna have a peace, and then they did a referendum, and everyone thought it was just a, a formality, but then the people voted against the peace. Yep. Haven't seen that go that way a couple of times. I thought it's possible that we wake up on the you know November eighth or whatever it is, and and he's won. But to your point, I thought, what if he won, and then they got him on like tax evasion? Right. And he's got to exactly. You just it said. Doesn't matter. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. Look, people in power and people who have a certain socioeconomic status don't face consequences for their actions. We know that. They can literally get caught raping someone in the back of a dumpster and get convicted of it and they don't really face real consequences for it. Real consequences are for the disadvantaged in this country. Okay? Yeah, for that's what real America's consequences all about. are for black people whose cars are broken down. That's exactly right. That's who they go that's and. That's what this country's all right. about at the so, moment, and we want to fix that. So, like, we didn't prosecute any bankers who rigged a complete banking system and based it on fraud, but the FBI did go after people who filled out their loan applications incorrectly. They, that they were interested in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or the whole thing with the Wells Fargo thing, where they said all those employees that were involved <laughs> right. got fired, yes. and then the CEO went to, to thank God for Elizabeth Warren, who was like, you still have a job? And the guy's like, yeah, well, why not? Because <laughs> yeah. you're the guy who ran the whole thing. You're the guy who ran the whole thing. But who cares? All these low-level employees, uh, they lose their jobs, even though they were the ones that were directed to do what you wanted them to do. It's just, it's sick. It's sick. And so if you really want someone to represent you and protect you and make sure that those who are, you know, taking advantage of a rigged system face some consequences, then, I don't know, we don't really have any candidates right now that would do that for you. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's unfortunate up. about Trump? You know what's it's unfortunate about Trump is that, that, like you guys were saying, like there's no consequences. Mm. Even if he loses, he's won because he can go around doing, you know, giving talks, just like Hillary did with all her million dollar, uh, you know, uh, fees or whatever they're paying her to do these talks. He's got such a fan base now. He could just—he's gonna make his income over the until the rest of to, to the end of his days. Yep. Is always. I don't know what it's gonna take for him to be so uh, uh, like uh, 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 you know disproven. Until someone comes along 
that speaks to their pain economically, that yeah. has a different message aside from racism, they're still gonna be attracted to those type of guys. Yeah, they But are. someone needs to speak to their pain because right now, if you mention NAFTA in Michigan, that's why Hillary lost and why Bernie will beat her in the primary. When Jordan Cheriton talks about that, he talks to people, they know what NAFTA is and they know what it did to the Rust Belt, right? Mm -hmm. And so right now, Hillary, the problem is Donald Trump has a base, right? So he's not gonna go any lower. He can't get any higher. Same thing with Hillary. She's having a hard time attracting attracting voters. Well, those voters she needs are the people who are going to him because at least he says, I hated NAFTA and I hate the TPP. Right now, Hillary's president is pushing the TPP, which is the global NAFTA, right? And people know this. So they're screwing themselves and they can't, and they're wondering why they're still having a hard time beating an orangutan. And it's because their party right now is, put, is working against working people and they see it.